Okay, uh, good uh, morning. Uh, as uh, Ms. Williams has introduced me, my name is Nobuzwe Bavuma, and I am the health, uh, uh, health sciences librarian. Okay, this is just the content that I'm going to be presenting. I'm going to touch on the library uh, web page as well on how to access the library information services from off campus and how to create a PIN and what are your borrowing rights as a postgrad student and also on the thesis and the dissertations and also how to access the um, journal articles. Okay, these are just my contact details. Um, as you know, health sciences is spread across uh, different uh, campuses throughout the university. So I am mainly based at South Campus, um, but you can contact me anytime that you need assistance on. Okay, so uh, how to access or where to access the library homepage. Um, this is where you can go to through uh, Nelson Mandela homepage. And then you can click on that icon where you see the library, or you can go directly through to the library homepage, which is library.mandela.ac.za. Okay, so what is the importance of creating a PIN? Now, a cre uh, to create a PIN, firstly, you must be a current student that is registered for this year. So you must do this each and every year. And then if you do that, you will be able to create a PIN in order to access the library uh, resources from home, as well as to uh, request uh, services like the interlibrary loans, which I'm going to talk about later on during this session. And also you can renew your own items that you have taken out throughout the library. Okay, so how to create that uh, PIN? Okay, so you go to the library homepage. Uh, under the useful links, there is a link where you can click where it says My Library Record. If you click on that link, there is this thing that is going to come up. Uh, if you click, firstly, you have to type in your surname. And then the barcode will usually be your student number, which means it will say S221, or if you are a staff member, it's going to start with an S and then your staff number. And then you click on the submit button. Okay, so this is what you enter, and then you click on the submit button. And then it's going to say, please enter a new pin. Now it does happen from time to time when you enter the information, uh, let's say your surname as well as your student number, it will give you an error message. It says the information that you have entered is incorrect. That will simply mean that uh, you haven't um, registered, let's say, through the university yet, because what happens is when you register through the university, we take that information from the ITS and upload it to the library. So if, it, if it's not appearing on our site, it will give you an error message to say that um, the information that you have entered um, is incorrect. What you can do, the, uh, you can contact me. We will investigate from our side what is happening in terms of uh, why are we not getting the correct information from IPS side. But if, if you are able to um, enter this information and then you get this screen where it says enter a new PIN, what you can do is you can enter a pin, it can be a number or it can be the words or a bit of both. Uh, it can start from two, di two, di sorry, two digits up to eight digits and then you retype the same pin and then you click on submit. Okay, once you click on submit, uh, there should be your library record that comes up uh, that looks like this. Sometimes it will have your picture. So we will have your details like your home address or your the campus where you are situated and we will also give you your expiry date. And then if you have taken out books, uh, you will be able to see which books you have taken out and also when are those books are due. And also the nice thing about this, you will be able to renew your own books um, and as well as especially for postgrad students who like to take out books. Um, we don't have a system where we will be able to go back and check for you which book you've taken out at a particular time. But we've got a button there where it says reading history. If you activate that, any books that you uh, you take out and return into the library, you can always go back to your reading history and see which books that you have taken out. 
Okay, so what are your borrowing rights as a postgrad student? So you are able to take out 20 books for a period of 60 days with an option, of course, to renew those books provided um, there isn't a, a reservation on that particular book. Oh, okay, you can do that uh, by calling us or you can email me to ask uh, if I can renew that book and you are able to do that twice. Okay, so on the library home uh, website, I just wanted to, us to explore some of the buttons that you will be able to see there. Okay, so if you are looking for a particular faculty librarian, uh, under the menu on the library home page, and you click on the faculty librarians, um, next page, you will be able to see which faculty librarians uh, belongs to who. Um, you will see there we have got two colleagues, which is uh, Ms. Breda. Ms. Breda is based at Mission Vale. She is currently responsible uh, to assist uh, the medical students at that site, since I am based at South Campus. And also Ms. Makoso, uh, she is based at, uh, at George Campus. Thank you. And then uh, if you see the buttons as well as uh, we've got what we call a, a letter of introduction there at the top. Uh, Pre-COVID, what we used to do for our postgrad students, especially those who are not based at, in Port Elizabeth, um, they say in Johannesburg, they are closer to Vets University or, or, or uh, University of Johannesburg. We used to give, uh, give out letters where you can go and introduce Introduce yourself to that particular library at that institution. But uh, uh, after COVID, a lot of institutions have closed that gap, um, sorry, that service for, for, students, uh, for students now. Uh, but I'm not sure how it's going now, now that we are on, on level one, but there used to be that service for students. And also you will be able to see um, the thesis and the dissertations from all the institutions in the Eastern Cape as well as you will be able to see your uh, how to access the end node, uh, which is our reference tool and also the interlibrary loans. OK, so what is the interlibrary loan service? An interlibrary loan service um, is when we when you are looking for a journal article or a book and our institution, which is Nelson Mandela, doesn't have that particular access to that book. So what we do is we request that particular book or that article from another institution. At the moment, there is no fee involved because all of it is, is online. We request the article, we receive it via online, we will send it to you once we receive it. Uh, again, the COVID factor. Now, a lot of institutions stop the service of supplying or lending us uh, books. Uh, for, for that. But if you are needing a particular chapter, let's say an e from an ebook, then we will be able to, to get that. But for, at the moment, in terms of lend or getting books from other institutions, um, that service uh, actually quite stopped. But if you click on that link, you will see there um, where you will be able to choose if you need a book or a chapter or a thesis or a dissertation from another institution. Also, we've got video videos and tutorials. Uh, now, throughout the year, the library uh, conducts training services for students. Uh, fortunately, with um, MS Teams now, uh, when we do training sessions, we normally record them and we upload it for students to go and look later on. Um, we've got what we call a library uh, island. Uh, you will have to log in, of course, uh, using your login university details. And then once you log in, you will see the uh, we've got a lot of um, presentations, your PowerPoint presentation and your videos on how to access information on different platforms, how to uh, install and know how to use it, and also how to access the ebooks. As well as um, the thesis and the dissertations, as I spoke earlier on, uh, you will find that under um, uh, Digital Commons, well, once you click on the Digital Commons, uh, uh, commons, you will go on this platform. It's either you have a research on a particular topic, you can type that in, or if you know um, the researcher's name, you can type that in. So if I type in, um, let's say uh, I type in Abdullah, and then I will get the results on my left hand side. I can see there at the top, I've got two uh, 
uh, uh, items under Abdullah. If I click on that, then I can see that I've got two. Um, she's got a master's as well as a doctoral thesis there. And then if I need to uh, access one of them, I will click on that. And this is the page that I will get in at the bottom of the screen. If you want to download that, uh, we've got a link there where it says download, and then you are able to open up that thesis. Okay, so it, we've got that. Uh, it does happen sometimes that um, the library doesn't receive a copy from the exam. Uh, if you do find that there's a particular study that you, uh, you do want, you can contact me. What I do is I contact my co uh, colleagues at the acquisitions. They get in touch with the exam. We get a copy, and then we upload that on the library system. Thank you. And then uh, we talk about the online databases, uh, which we get for our journal articles. Now, this is why it's important that you create a PIN. Uh, you won't be able to access the online databases from off campus if you don't have a particular PIN. I also encourage you not only um, to access the databases using a PIN, you can also use the VPN. Uh, this is something that I found while under lockdown, it's much easier if I just turn on my VPN. It, it just works as if I'm, I'm, I'm here on campus. So you can also do that. Uh, so, okay, I just put up um, the particular thesis, sorry, um, databases for the health sciences, um, Access Pharmacy, Access Medicine, and EBSCO, Jove. Okay, we've got Micromedics, and then that particular one where it says Nexus. Nexus is where you will, or will be able to go and look at other institutional um, research as well. So if you are looking to see what research that's been done at other institutions, uh, Nexus is your database you can use. And also we've got a particular, a very important one, which is SAGE Research Methods for Postgrad. Okay, so... Um, also, we've got uh, open access resource as well that you can make use of. Okay, so the stage research method, um, this is why I, I just wanted to focus on just on this particular one, because it's very important. It takes you uh, from the beginning of your journey when you start with your research. Okay, so once you get to the screen, you will see the, uh, um, your stage research methods. And then design a research project. Now, if you click there, you will see um, it's got an overview. Uh, if you're looking for information on how to design or conduct a particular research product, a, a project, and also the research methods that you can use and how to conduct your literature review, you can also uh, find that information. So it's a very, very important database that you can make use of uh, if you are going to be do doing your uh, research. And also, you can also find your research methods there. Okay, so on locating the e-books, um, as you know, lockdown, we actually had to quite uh, move with the times, because the library was under lockdown, we couldn't access the library, so we've purchased a lot of e-books uh, that we would like uh, students to make use of. And there are two ways to go about it. One of them is to look at the classic catalog. If under the classic catalog, you go to the advanced key on the left-hand side, and then once you click there, it's either you know the type of book or the title of the book that you are looking for or you just got a topic uh, if you say research ethics you can type it in there and then under the material type you must just make sure that you select uh, ebook okay you select ebook and then you will get your results okay so you can see on my right, on my left hand side that uh, it does indicate the icon on my left hand side indicates that all these books are an ebook. So if you are looking for a particular book, you have to click on the title of the book, which is written in blue. You click there. Now, I must just mention there are different platforms where we get our ebooks. There's your EBSCO 
and there's your ProQuest, and then there's your Science Direct. Each and every platform will require you to register in order to download a, an ebook. And downloading an ebook doesn't necessarily mean you'll have that book forever. No, there's limitations and it depends on a particular publisher. Some of our publishers will allow you to download that particular book for a period of, of 21 days. After the, uh, the 21 days, that book will return automatically on the system. Others will say for only for seven days. And also with the e-books, there are certain, um, when we purchase a copy, there's unlimited, which means there are more students who can access that book. But some of, sometimes the license from the publisher will say one copy or for three copies. So if I am busy with that particular book and it's only one copy and you want to access it, it will tell you it's unavailable at the time, okay? So it does depend. Sometimes when I do have a request from a lecturer and they need a particular book, I would go back to them and say, okay, we've got a license for one. It costs, let's say 250,000 and uh, three uh, licenses for this particular, obviously it will be more. So. I will, we will communicate, I will indicate to you what is available, but it does uh, also happen that um, some of the books, we only purchase one license at a time, which means one student can access that book. And then if they download that for a particular period, let's say seven days or 21 days, that book is unavailable for that period of time. And then you can download that book. Uh, you can access that, and yes, as I said earlier on, if you want to download the book, you have to register, and each and every platform have got different types of um, reg registration as well. And then lastly, um, just to uh, uh, take a note on the reference tool. Now, I always encourage postgrad students to um, download EndNote because there have been instances where uh, students have done all their, their um, uh, proposal and all of that stuff. Now they have to go back. We have to sit and try to upload all the references. So once you are done with all your um, uh, uh, stuff, uh, you, you come back and sit with me. I would encourage you before you even do your research, you start with your research, download EndNote. So when you are looking for your articles, you can always upload the citations on your EndNote. Even if you're not going to use it, you can go back and delete that. So at the moment, um, the library, I was trying actually the other day how uh, to access EndNote 9, but I see that the university is actually purchase uh, the version 20. So the, um, the university now is has a note version 20 at the moment, but this is how you'll go about it. You'll go to the library homepage where it says library uh, and note, you click there. We've also uploaded the study, uh, the guidelines as well as the tutorials on how to go about it, on how to install and note. Okay, so once you install your EndNote, also another thing that's important about the EndNote, um, once you create your desktop version, please make sure that you also create your online version. This is to avoid an incident where you lose your, uh, your laptop or your laptop becomes uh, damaged for whatever reason. So, because um, I, I had a student where they've done all their research and they've lost their laptop, now they don't have access to that. Once you create your desktop version, make sure you also do your online and you sync both. Even if you lose your, uh, um, your, your laptop, you will be able to access still uh, your, your, your online version of, of, of your EndNote. Okay, so once you um, uh, upload your citation on your EndNote, this is how you are going to go about it. And if you want to insert your citation, you don't have to do it manually anymore. What you'll do is you'll go and highlight the citation that you want to 
insert in your document and you go to end notes at the top, which should reflect on your word document and then you insert it. And this is how it's going to sit on your document. And I know Pro, uh, Dr. Zolma is going to uh, do further uh, training on this, but yeah, this is just what I wanted to touch on. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Pavuma. We appreciate it. Um, over to you guys. Any questions for Ms. Pavuma? OK, from uh, Yolanda. What happens if I am a prospective student and have not reg registered yet? However, in the meantime, I would like to access the library services online databases for the purposes of preparing for my studies. OK, uh, what happens usually uh, we don't. Um, the students won't be able to access them, but I can do the search for the for this prospective students. Yes. OK, so uh, Yolanda, does that um, answer you? So you can contact Ms. Yes. Um, Pavuma. Yes. Thank you very much for that. Any other questions? In person, another one? Is EndNote the same or similar to Mendeley? Is EndNote the only accepted referencing tool? Yes, uh, it, it, it's, it, it's both. Both of them are accepted, but the library is doing a training on EndNote. This is what we are, um, are, are trained on. Uh, I don't know how to use Mendeley. I have never used Mendeley before, but they more or less work the same. Yes. OK, thank you, Yolanda. Are you covered?